All right, guys, so I'm starting things right in the middle of stuff here on the Caney Fork River here in uh, it's Middle Tennessee, be where you call it. Uh, kind of eastern Middle Tennessee, being more specific. And there's a fish, and he's off. So it's been that kind of morning. Um, quick bites, got to be on it. Uh, I am throwing a size 20 midge. It's uh, got it under a yarn indicator. Give me a little bit better drift. Water's low right now. Not as clear as I'd like it, but the fish don't seem to mind too terribly much. Uh, overcast conditions. Uh, really, really comfortable out here. So it's been either rainy or hot this summer and late spring. So I'll take the break in the weather. Seems to have the fish going. There's one. Okay. And well. <laughs> That would be the problem with the size 20 fly. You get a little bitty hook. Uh, doesn't take much for these fish to get off when they shake. So we'll get right back in them. Missed one completely cast before that. And that one happened, so there may be a pod sitting right in there. All I'm doing is casting out and just letting it drift down. And there's one. Stay on him. Just letting it drift down, getting as dead a drift as I can. My indicator shows up real good. That's yeah, a small guy. Uh, kind of got a mixed bag of rainbows and browns. So a little brown here. Yeah. Oh, buddy. Come on, fella. Come here. Come here. Come here. Hold on. Cute little guy. Cut one earlier that had some chomp marks all over him. Something gotten a hold of him. There we go. And there he goes. What I'm doing to uh, get that dead drift right is I am kind of checking the drift of that indicator with just either the small collection of bubbles or any kind of light debris that's floating on the river. Just kind of keep it moving about the same speed as that. Uh, natural presentation keeps the fish from suspecting this is completely fake and not anything edible at all. Uh, every now and then I will throw in a slight twitch just to get their attention. Real light twitch, not something about like that, not much more. Just let it continue to drift. I've been casting upstream, downstream, uh, across. If I notice fish surfacing, which they're starting to get a little more active now, I'll try and cast and lead that fish by about 10 feet. Like this one that went, it came up here. And I do like to throw long casts, which for nymphing isn't always the best, but on a river that has flow that's this uniform and consistent, you can actually get away with it. That was a subtle little take there. Seems like the bigger fish have been real hesitant on the take. As opposed to just pulling it under, it just kind of bobs or winks. You just see that indicator stall for a second. Like that. Oh, just like that. This is a little bit bigger than that other one. As if to prove my point. Rainbow. So let me get this guy landed. Into the circle. Get him released. Give you a better look. Still calm down a little bit. Come here, buddy. I'll get you back in the water in just a sec. Yeah, there you go. And that's what I've been doing. Um, so I'm throwing. A Loop EvoTech 590F. It's fast action. Absolutely love this rod. And for my line, I have an 8 foot 5X leader. And for my tippet, I'm using uh, 7X. It's really light fluorocarbon. Maybe a little clearer and lighter than I need in these conditions. But I will take it. And it's working. That's what I tend to use out here. It's kind of my go to rig. Uh, had the most luck with it day in day out on this setup 
Um, later in the day, I'll probably switch to a woolly bugger. A little heavier tippet and throw something, a little more action, see if I can pick up some larger fish or just get a little faster action. But anyways, I'm going to get back to it and I'll be back.